one's awesome. <laughs> okay. Our, we're recording whenever you are ready to take it away. All right, so it's uh, Thursday, October 24th at 6 o'clock. Heritage Parks for Heritage Preservation Board meeting is beginning. And we'll start with roll call. Um, Sonia Gallant and Rich Storick are absent. Uh, Lelia? Present. Carol? Present. And I'm present to Hillary. All right, so uh, let's listen to uh, any public comment on matters that are not on the agenda. Uh, I don't know if there's anyone online that's no. No. zooming in. Okay. All right. And here is now we get to the meat of the meeting, the planning staff's oral report. Um, let's see. I don't know that I have too much for you. Um, the plaques are finally the payment is the initial payment has been dispersed to KVO following your discussion item tonight about the QR code and where that will link to. And we will send that to them and then they can get to work on their uh, design that they're going to do and present. Um, Let's see. Other than that, I don't think we've had any. Oh, I guess the library was approved um, and then the city council did make some revisions at its at two recent meetings. So they have approved a 110 square foot room for all of the heritage related items that are going to be placed there. Um, I don't think there's been any other. The only thing is the bus stop downtown. Oh, and then the bus stop downtown right across from, is it Burritoville or that area? Or Left Bank. Left Bank. Is going to get replaced, I believe. Oh, but I don't. Do we know the design? Yeah, you mean the one that has a little shadow? The trellis one. It'll be replaced with one of the ones that is used by Marin Transit around Marin. Like they're usually dark green uh, transit. The same design that they use in other places. But is the concern if it goes with the historic district? Um, there or it's being replaced. So there's, they didn't. It, because it's a temporary thing to be removed, there wasn't a lot of discussion about that. It's a temporary? Well, it's removable. They could just done it place screwed to the ground, like placed in concrete. So why are they replacing the existing bus stop? It's falling apart currently. You know, like it's in disrepair. And yeah, and even the lumber, some of it can't be reused because it had so many staples on the side of the <laughs> well, Okay. Okay. Well, it's interesting because we've talked before about the trash cans, right? Remember that discussion mm -hmm. where we looked at designs of, you know, possible trash, tra trash receptacles in the city. I don't know how much the Heritage Board can weigh in. It sounds like it's something that's sort of. Well, how about, yeah, some of the public works items, if you're interested, we probably just want to give them a heads up to alert you to give input on them. Do we need to? Decide anything tonight? Yeah, not with the, no. I mean, the bus stops going in. So yeah, it's, that's what I think. <laughs> but I wanted to let you know, so you're not surprised when you see it going in. Okay. Well, and I, I am a little concerned about anything going in downtown and it is confined in the historic district that it's compatible. What else is there? But you don't know the designers. Well, it's, I, I do. It's it's just, I, I guess it's not incompatible. There's enough, when you drive around, you'll it's sort of paying attention to the Marin Transit stops, they all look the same. So it's um, pretty neutral in design. I mean, it's still, there's nothing. I was worried about it when I was working in the town of Ross because they were going to do the same thing. There was really, I like got 50s, the old, um, I don't remember the old Golden Gate bus stops, but there was some metal bus stops that used to be around. Um, but I thought it turned out actually nice. It was across, or there was two, one place by the Marin Art Garden Center and um, I think they turned out fine. I was actually worried about it, but they were, they seem, I don't think anyone even notices them. <laughs> so they're innocuous enough. Yeah. It's going to be a change, but I don't think they stand out. I, I remember when we had that big issue about the poles that were installed right downtown. But this, I mean, it seems like this is part of something that exists outside Larkspur, so I don't think we would be able, even if we didn't like it, I can't see where we would have any ability to. Yeah, unless the city was to fundraise to pay for their own new stop. Our, um, this one is sort yeah. of a free bus stop and okay. matches the other ones, which might be good for people who use transit, they'll recognize it. As far as I know, I don't know of any historic bus shelter style. It, but it didn't exist. <laughs> I mean, I don't think that there's anything that we have to conform to in terms of right. something that's 
approved or historic trip. Other than that, I don't think we've had any recent historic evaluations done or applied for. I think last the time you met, we had discussed seven walnut. So in case you weren't, I, maybe we didn't discuss, maybe this happened in the interim. Um, seven walnut was reviewed for better evaluated by Jerry for being potentially uh, historically significant. So she did uh, create a report and did find that that building uh, has the potential to be on the inventory should the owners pursue listing it. Uh, that's the only other evaluation that we've had recently, and I, I don't have anything else for you. So can I clarify? Audited on the inventory based on Jerry's evaluation. Are we in a position to say to the owner, would you, would you object or how does that work? I, yeah, I don't know the owner's interest in pursuing an official listing right now, but it, we do have that report. so. At any time in the future, if anything were to be proposed there as, a, as an exterior alteration, that would be factored in and it would be brought before this board. But it's not officially on the inventory now. No, it would need to be added by city council okay. officially. So that that would be the uh, challenge maybe because at that point, the owner may not want it to be on the inventory. So we have to. Yeah, I think they're in the midst of a sale. So I, I don't know exactly. If it, I don't even know if it's sold yet, but um, it could be that a new owner will will pursue that a little bit more than the current owners. But regardless, if someone buys it and wants it to work, it comes up for an inventory. Yeah, it's been found eligible. So it, okay. it basically gets the same level of review. Well, then should we move on to the public hearing portion of this? Um, item. A is 25 Ward Street. Hello. Nice to meet you. I'll give you just a very brief staff report and then I can, I okay. can turn it over to the owner. Let me just pull up and make sure my screen here. Pull up the renderings for us. This is quite different. We now have to get used to this. Oh, it's over here. I'm yes, I know. Oh. We've noticed that this one's kind of hard to read with, with some plans. Uh, so yes, good evening, uh, board members. The item before you is a design review for 25 Ward Street. It's the business known as Farmhouse Local. Uh, the owner and the applicant are seeking to create a more exterior deck space off the rear of the structure. So the, the proposed changes are a 491 square foot second story rear deck a 361 square foot rear patio, which would replace the existing patio that's there. And then there is a small 27 foot addition also at the rear for a refrigerator. Uh, there would be the new exterior wall that you can see to kind of ring the decks. And there is some articulation. There's some glass block proposed to let light in, but still kind of preserve the privacy. Uh, and then some exterior lights that have been added to the building to kind of shine a light on Rice Lane. So the building is not on the inventory and it's not in the National Register District, but it, the way the lines were drawn for the Heritage District downtown, it does fall within that. So per the Municipal Code, it does require a review and a recommendation by the Heritage Preservation Board. So uh, city records indicate that the building was constructed in 1925 and there's been limited exterior alterations since that. Uh, I did find some building permit records from Let's see, 1995 for exterior improvements that noted the installation of bollards in the parking area and opening the rear wall to put in the door. But that was about it. Um, so staff's recommendation here would be that you uh, review the project, take a comment from the owner and the applicant who are here, listen to public comment, and then forward a recommendation of approval to the Planning Commission. And I'm available if you have any questions. Thank you. So is this where I chime in? Yep. <laughs> well, I'm David Monson. I'm the owner of Farmhouse Local. I've had a Farmhouse Local for 12 years. Uh, Leo Arnold was the previous owner of the building, and I purchased the building when he passed away last year. And I purchased the building last year in uh, November. Uh, the, the building has been in pretty severe disrepair. In the 12 years that I've been at Farmhouse Local, we haven't had air conditioning. Uh, the upstairs, I guess, guess that would be the south. Easterly two offices leak. Uh, that's from uh, damage to the stucco. I have replaced the roof already. Uh, and basically, the um, replacement of the stucco is just to ensure the integrity of the building. 
the uh, the patio, which is existing right now, I would like to uh, enclose. And as Alex said, put some glass blocks so it doesn't feel like an extension of the building. <laughs> and then add a rear deck on the top. And my ultimate uh, goal, and what I will do after this uh, process, is convert the upstairs to a residence because I'd like to live there because I like Parksburg. <laughs> Or help with my commute, but then uh, it just it's it's a it's an amazing building. I love the community here. Uh, I think Farm Health Local is well established, and uh, I, I think the changes are 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 just and are for the city in general. So to clarify, the upstairs deck is not part of the residence. No, 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 that'll be part of the upstairs residence. But there's there's stairs leading from the patio up to that second. There are, but they don't come from the patio, they come from the parking lot. Nothing too. Yes. Okay, it's hard for me to see in the plans because when I looked at the plans, it looked like it was an exterior wall to the south of the stairs. And that the stairs were in. Oh, I see. Okay, but the the entrance to the stairs is from. The, yeah, they're running right now. Okay. TV. That's easier to see. Yeah. Yes. Well, I'm. What I'm looking at the plans. Oh, you want the drawings? Okay. Yeah. This is helpful. Have you looked at how much light changes on that patio? Well. When we increase the height of the patio, which will be about two feet, that should help create the airflow and the light necessary to, to make it a patio. Because <laughs> one of the things I don't want to do is just enclose a box. Um, so I, I feel like with the extra addition of, of, of footage on the top, uh, it'll, it'll create enough enough airflow. And I think the build, the, the clear glass blocks are important to uh, light. I think that's the second story. That's existing. Oh, here we go. There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the entrance to the stairs is from the parking lot and it kind of goes up between the patio wall and then there's a larger exterior wall. Correct. Okay. So there's no interaction between the patio below and the deck above. Absolutely not. It's separate. And the way to en enter the patio below, because I've had lunch there many times. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> is um, you do you change the entrance from the main restaurant, or is it coming around from the side? So if you were to go into farmhouse local in the patio, the the entrance currently is about halfway down. It'll be almost immediately as you enter the patio. There will be a fire lane exit, and that's so we can accommodate parking and. Um, the additional refrigeration. So the entrance is kind of right where that refrigerated block yes, is that dark right. yes. black line. Okay. So the entrance is that door swings open from the restaurant. So there's no way to get from the patio below out to the parking lot because before you had the, those nice open area that you could walk from the patio. Into yes, the there's a gate there. there. There's the gate there. Yes, there's there's still a gate. Just, just like there is now, it's just moved. It's just, it's just uh, slightly closer to the building. Oh, that swinging thing? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so that's okay. So there's two entrances right next to each other, one from the restaurant and one from the patio into the parking lot. Okay. Yes, that's correct. Those on the east side? On the east side. The south is where the glass block is, right? No, the, no. That, that would be the west side. Because that's on the property line. Okay, the west side. So but if you look at the upper right uh, uh, rendering, that, that that wooden fence is seven feet high, so it's open above that. So it's all open to the east. Oh, what, what's the height difference? Is that about four feet. feet? Four feet. We would have liked it to be open all the way around, but those two walls on the south and west have to be one hour rated which is why they're enclosed and they're solid. To the south and to the west. The south and, and the west. And they, the west, that's correct. They can't be open because they're right on the property line. Right. So the glass block was kind of a way to still achieve the openness, but 
give it a fire proper fire rating. Mm -hmm. So in the bottom right hand corner, what we're seeing is a night a night view of it, right? Correct. Yes. And then so the 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 part the wall that's facing the car that's the east wall, correct? Correct. So then that. Brown wall that you're describing that we see is that seven feet tall. Correct. Okay, and, and it's, then it's, wood. A it's open wood that. slats. Yeah. Oh, it's like a slatted it's slatted wall. slatted wood, so you'll see through it a little bit. Okay, and then those striped sort of glass blocks are that like from the west wall or that's the west wall. That's the west wall. I see. Okay, so the only thing on the east is that sort of um, slatted wooden seven foot tall wall that we Correct. see. Correct. Okay. And there's no entrance in that way. The yes. entrance is just the right of the oh, car. Oh, I see. Yeah. Yes. 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 Okay. Now, let me say about that. It's right next to that walk-in, which you see in white right there, uh, that the, the seven-foot-high wooden thing towards the alley is a dedicated garbage area. And that's one of the, to be an issue on Bryce Lane, there's, there's a lot of, we need to have a dedicated garbage area. <laughs> so, oh, good. yeah, so that's what that, that's what that is. Right on the corner. Yes, yeah, right on the corner of the building. Um, well, I know our, our purview is anything that's visible from the public right away. So you, since you're on the corner with um, Ward and then Rice Lane, so I guess we have to look at those two views. Um, from, from, from Ward Street, there's no change at all. Right. Okay. So I have a question because um, of it may just be the illustrations here. It didn't look like in the plans that you're making any alterations to the siding and the windows. Is that the case? You're not changing the finish of the siding? No. And not changing the windows? No. no. Okay. We're eliminating one window down below, and that's it. It's kind of unnecessary. It's, in fact, you can see it in that drawing right next to where the garbage area. There is a window right there that is into my prep room that's extraneous. <laughs> So that little window, that little black window kind of underneath those sconces, is that the window you're talking no, about? No, that one stays. That, that stays, yeah. okay. That one goes into the dining room, but there's one that goes, uh, then it goes back into the prep room that, that we don't, don't use. Okay. Color of the building, because the existing versus the proposed are two different colors, and I don't know if that's just, so you're going to paint it from that, the, whatever color blue that is. Yeah, it's kind of an awful gray, <laughs> faded in most parts. Um, we're looking more like a cappuccino kind of cafe au lait kind of color with some darker trim. You're going to keep that really cool corrugated metal sign. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> what is it that we're required to do? So because it's in the, the heritage district, your your task tonight to forward a recommendation to the planning commission who would ultimately make a decision on the entitlements. Is there anyone from the public that has weighed in on this? Do we have any letters or we did not get any letters? No, but I could I could speak uh, if you would like. Yeah, just at least you use the yeah. microphone at the are you in there? I'll try. Hello. You might have to turn it on. Oh. Wow. There are people. Really... <laughs> there I was it on. It takes a second. Well, we can How about yeah. oh my goodness gracious. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah, I'm a member of the public. My name is Bob Wood. I am a resident of Rice Stable Ports, which is directly to the east of the uh, farmhouse local. And we have a great relationship with uh, Dave and um, we have, and we won't get into this in a big way, but we really feel that uh, Rice Lane is a very, very important part of the downtown adjacent to Magnolia Avenue. And what we really like here that Dave and um, Colin. Colin have been doing is very simple, subtle changes that improve the relationship to Rice Lane enormously. Now, Ward Street, we think, is very well taken care of. You know, saving the sign, you know, the facade and everything, and um, and all of that, the character. 
But on Rice Lane, what's important is now, if you look at those drawings, it doesn't feel like back of house, which is kind of the way other uh, occupants on Rice Lane are. So the garbage cans are taken care of, they're enclosed, the area is cleaned up nicely, and we're just really appreciative and very supportive of the work that they have done to, you know, preserve the building, save the building, save the use, and upgrade it and make it a part of Rice Lane. I'm speaking for Rice Lane continuously. And um, kind of a representative of the kinds of things that can be done on Rice Lane to make it feel less like, you know, just back a house, garbage cans lined up, but more of, you know, an inviting space sensitive to the neighbors and, you know, contributing to the downtown. Thanks. Thank you for that, Mr. Wood. I have a question. Um, and I don't know that it needs to be reflected in the plans. I'm just curious uh, what sort of landscaping or if there's going to be any potted things or something that kind of brings a little greenery back there or? So currently we have three uh, plants out there, three big potted plants. One is a kumquat tree and two of them are flowered trees. I don't know what they are. <laughs> I love the kumquat tree. Uh, I'd like to preserve those and, and keep those out there as well. Um, I, I, as Bob said, it's like it's it's important to have the exterior rear feel as important as the interior front or the the, the, the front of the building. Uh, I was was intended to do but make this uh, inviting versus um, as as Bob said, kind of the, the back of the business, right? right? Mm -hmm. and, I, and, and we'll certainly do that. About thirty percent of our guests enter through the patio. So it's important for me to have them be attractive. Yeah, no, I think so. And the, the parking is still going to be maintained in the back. So there still will be a place for one or two cars. One car. One car. Okay. So that would be the residence car. That's the residence car. Disabled parking has been. The disabled park. In your plans. Yeah, yeah. it's always it. <laughs> <laughs> well. I'm still standing now, but you never know. Else. <laughs> Do you have any questions? Or? No, leave it for us to come. Uh, Thank you. I, I was more concerned how you're going to maintain life back there and not patio. Um, I, you've addressed all of my questions. I really um, appreciate how this building is being brought back to life with a new roof. And kind of protect, like preserving it, and that's that really is the charter of this board is to preserve these buildings mm -hmm. and also to make them livable and useful. Um, do we need to have yeah, a resolution? A motion, a motion to recommend. Okay. Who wants to craft a motion? Um, so what we're doing, I gather, is approving the removal of the existing rear plans. And construction of two new jacks at the new construction. He would, he would make a motion to recommend approval of the, the changes that you just made. Yes. Recommend to the planning commission approval of the removal of existing rear patio, construction of two new jacks at the new structure, one on grade and one on second story. I'll second that. Okay, all in favor? Aye. It's unanimous. That was easy. <laughs> yeah. Good job. I can't wait until we get done. Right. Yeah. Addition. Hopefully it'll be springtime. Okay, that's all. Oh, you're going to do it over the winter. Uh, you know, I'm going to do it. So the, like I said, the stucco is failing, and I think it's really uh, harming the interior of the building. So as soon as we get it, yeah, we're, we're moving forward. I was getting all excited when I was looking at my pack, and I was like, oh, <laughs> people go upstairs. And <laughs> That's a whole other can of worms, <laughs> but I'd love to live there because I really do like to have Yeah, yeah. Thank you, and thank you to everyone here. You're welcome. You're welcome. All right, so agenda item 4B, 469 Magnolia Avenue. 
uh, has to do with removing of the removal of existing horizontal wood siding and five windows to be replaced with composite siding and wood clad window. Gary had a chance to, or Glenn Stark Architect had a chance to look at this. I will cover that in my report, actually. Um, oh. But I will I will just say that the owner requested to have this reviewed by the board without an evaluation done on the structure. Would you like my report? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. So, um, yes, the item is for 469 Magnolia. It's the rearmost building behind the Manage Yogurt structure. Um, and like you said, it's replacing existing wood siding and windows that are there with composite, almost like a hardy board siding that will appear similar um, from the owner. It's about an inch thicker per each piece of siding. So there will be a, a change to the width of each board compared to what's there now. But when viewed from the street, I think it'd be very hard to tell. Uh, and then they are replacing the windows with, I believe, wood clad windows. Uh, and like I said, the owner has requested because of the limited nature of, of the project to have it reviewed by the board and forwarded a recommendation similar to this last item uh, without a review by a, a historic architect. Um, and just for a bit of history on the building, the records that we have indicate that it was constructed around the turn of the 19th century, sometime between 1895 and 1910. It was previously used as a butcher shop, well, originally used as a butcher shop, I should say. <clears throat> Uh, when the 1977 Historic Resources Inventory was adopted, there was a DPR form created for the property that noted the building as an integral part of the feeling of old downtown Larksburg. Uh, the property went through a design review in 2004 to construct a portion of the existing second story that's there now. It was on the southern side, so kind of towards the, the school. Um, and as a part of that review, it was reviewed, the structure was reviewed by Dan Peterson, who was a prior consulting historic architect for the city. Uh, and he evaluated it and found that uh, the two original buildings, which would have been the front building and the, this building we're talking about tonight, have undergone significant alterations, which have eroded the historic architectural character. And the property was given a D rating uh, in the 1977 historic, uh, historic resources inventory. And per the uh, attached report by Mr. Peterson, the shiplap siding and double hung windows on the east elevation are the only original exterior construction which remains. However, the owner has said that those windows were replaced in the 90s. Uh, I didn't find a permit to tie to this for that. Um, so in conclusion, staff normally requires retention and repair of original siding in this case, given that the structure has a D or was given a D rating. And the appearance will remain largely the same when viewed from Magnolia Avenue and will not detract from the district. We are supportive of the application to replace the siding. And the only reason, the only thing I do want to note um, is that it is being replaced by, by composite, I think, for fire or so, oh. so uh, similarly to the last item, uh, the staff recommendation is to review the proposed plans and forward recommendation. In this case, not to the planning commission of the scope of work here can be approved by the zoning administrator. Oh, well, yeah. okay. there's been work done on it before. Is that correct? Yes, I think they've, they've gotten, um, they have, a, they did replace some siding on the, on the south side of the front building. Uh, and then they also. Magnolia facing the Magnolia. The, the, yeah, face the church. Oh, the church. church. And since the 1970s, all the material on the front face of the building was replaced because before, when it was rated, Lower, it had asbestos siding and a big brick at the oh. base. So um, I think it looks probably a lot better than it did in 1977 when it was first evaluated. So the east side of the building, which would be the side facing Magnolia, but it's a back building. The back building. On so the back building, only the front that faces Magnolia has the original siding right. and everything else has been changed. And the oh. double plan of windows. Except that the plan of those windows don't exist anymore. The ones that were have right. we double checked that because I mean that's what the owner said that they were changed in the nineties, but have we no, don't think if I don't. recall. Do you can you pull up a street view on that one? I don't know if we'll be able to see it. Yeah, I was curious for you to say replace the composite siding and wood clad window. Do you mean wood clad windows? Are all the wind all the windows being replaced? This, all five? Yeah. But and they're all going to be wood clad? Yes. Yeah, they're all the five that are noted on the plan, but I think they're all on that. Okay. So that would be an improvement in a way? 
I would say generally wood clad is better than you know aluminum or you know, some other types of oh, windows. Absolutely, particularly for historic buildings. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They look very not original. <laughs> no, that helps. No, those are not original. No. So it's basically the space where the laundry mat is. And above. And above. Yeah. And it doesn't include Donut Alley or the offices above Donut Alley. No, there's no changes proposed under this for the, the two buildings. At the, are the buildings going to be the same with money? Yeah, the, all of the opening mechanisms and the design are all the same. It's, it's just going to be, yeah, the little divided lights are all going to be replicated. Mm -hmm. But the siding that we see here in the picture that we see from the street, from the parking lot, that's all the original siding? We, we don't have a record of it yeah. being replaced, but we assume that's the that it's the original. Oh, that's the original. And we're also assuming it's original just because his request is because it's in such bad shape. So we're thinking maybe they didn't change it since 1977 because he's come. That's one of the reasons why we want to replace it is because they don't like the condition of it. Well, so he's saying that um, just as a side note, that the owner is requesting us to review this without having a historical architect do it. And I mean, this is kind of. Well, I, I can speak to that because I do know the owner sitting across the street from us. And it's expense, it's a cost feature of having the. Historic architecture. Yeah, it's getting to be an expensive project, more expensive with each little. Our hearing is expensive. I mean, I don't really know what anything costs. And we, well, we have a proposal, I think $3,000. $3,500 to review it. Um, we told them that they're taking a chance that you may not recommend in favor of it and that you might still want the historic report, and then we'll have to get the report. And then come back to you. So, an option to require a report. That's why we that's right. why we ordered the report because we thought it would be useful to know what they thought of it. However, you do have that Dan Peterson report saying that they didn't think the structure was historic. Yeah. and that was when it was older and more original, probably mm -hmm. right when he did it. And I well, I just to clarify the Dan Peterson report is from 2004, but there were uh, in 1977 when the National Register um, application was sent, it was referenced then and also given a low, a low grade for a contribution to. So it's given a grade D in 2004. Uh, in I think both. Both. Yeah, 469 Magnolia Avenue contribution to the district. D. Yeah, the only thing I worry about is setting some kind of a precedent where the homeowner doesn't want to have the architect for whatever reason. Um, I, you know, I, I think it, that is an important part of our decision process is having these projects reviewed. So I, I wouldn't want to see that happen very often, but I mean, given that we have Dan Peterson's report and that you've reviewed it and that the building was rated a D, and it sounds like the work that they're doing is going to, I mean, it won't look like the original siding. I mean, it could be painted the same color, it's going to be shiplap, but it's going to be wider, right? So it won't have that appearance of original siding, uh, but the windows have been changed already. So um, anyway, that's I just want to put that on record that this is not typical to have. Hasn't been reviewed that needs to be reviewed. Do you know how expensive it is? I mean, reviews. Yeah, I mean, what kind of a cost? They, they, I mean, they vary. In this case, it was yeah, I think like we said, about three thousand, thirty-five hundred. Larger projects can get up into like five or seven thousand dollars. Mm -hmm. Plus, there's the risk of the project not getting approved. Or having the recommendation be that it not be right. approved. Mm -hmm. Done differently. Yeah. Yeah. So I just, um, do we want to make a motion to approve this or do we want to discuss it more? I mean, the owner's not here. Absolutely yeah. not. Okay. No. <laughs> yeah. I was going to ask about if he sent a letter or. He was informed that it was coming to the meeting tonight. Uh, I don't know. I went into the packet and I had not. I've not heard any, I've not had any communication with them. Yeah. 
something off or we should decide? I think we should decide. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if Rich or Sonia would have input on this, but we have a quorum. You know, I, I like to kind of keep things moving and not have things languish or especially with winter coming. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I feel comfortable making a motion and we can vote on this. Should I not vote? Mm. Uh, it wouldn't be a financial conflict of interest for you. No, not at all. So and you're okay. It's not okay. within 600 feet of your house. Right. right. And yeah. I forget, we should check those for, for all this project. But you're okay for these, I think, right? No one else lives near downtown. No, no, no. Okay. No. All right. Okay. Great. Well. Approve the removal of existing horizontal wood siding and five windows to be replaced with composite siding and wood clad window at 469 Magnolia Avenue. Um, I'm presuming that the painting, uh, there's nothing here about like what the color of the final project would be. The owner hasn't indicated any change of color to me. You could, I suppose you could forward a recommendation to the zoning administrator, including a condition that they repainted the same color. I think that would be a good idea. He may be wanting to paint the whole thing, you know, a different color. And in which case, if somebody's painting a historic building, right, it comes before the board. I think so. Yeah, I, I can't remember what they well, I think it's, it's been really mentioned in past reports about exterior colors. I mean, got some guidance from Kristen, but I can't remember which. Yeah, I knew we had that when Perry was um, changing hands, and Perry came to us, and one of the things he had to present was the color scheme for what it ultimately became. Mm -hmm. Do you remember that? You know what I remember about Perry's is that would make it look like the old fashioned paint stripes, you know. Um, yeah, that's right. I don't know about the code. <clears throat> so, and of course, it's, I don't have any way of knowing if the existing color is historic as it is today. No, yeah, I don't know. That we don't know. I, I have so much, but I, I don't think that we may not have discretionary review over paint closed downtown. It's possible in our field, but we've looked into it. But I, there was discussion over the colors when the building was first remodeled, I think in 2002. And there was a big review of the colors, which they aren't the same colors anymore, I think, but it was. But, um, and there was recommendations on the colors, and it was a much bigger deal of, at the time when Dan Peterson was reviewing it. I personally think the color discussion is one that at least needs to be had, and just to make sure that owners, and I'm not saying that Mr. Howard would do this, but just so that we kind of keep an eye on if somebody wants to paint a building and it's in it magenta but, yeah or something like generation to you that's it well you'd be down to confirm because i'm wondering the, the last the building control. that was painted was the one that's right next to the movie theater and they did it without asking us so we didn't have a chance to look at the roads okay <laughs> control that because you don't need a permit to paint right right so it's a little harder to catch but they do need a permit to put scaffolding on the sidewalk. So we might, okay. we would, okay. we've asked them to give us a heads up if they get an application to put the scaffolding on the sidewalk. Oh, that's a good heads up, right? And I think with here, when someone's replacing siding, the assumption would be that that siding would have to be painted. And they, but they did the front building, they did some work to the front of the front building and they kept the same color. So I'm imagining their, their plan isn't to paint the building because they had, would have painted the they worked did some repairs to the siding and think of the parking lot. That building is pretty central. I think that was Gilardi's butcher shop yeah. originally. The original butcher was not Gilardi, but the Gilardi bought it from the original butcher. It's, uh, I think I have it here somewhere. Yeah, it's very Stoldenberg. Oh, Harold yeah. Hugo Stoldenberg. Yeah. All right. Well, your proposal. Um, 
Do you want a second? A second here to possible. approve um, item 4B. Um, I, if you could make your motion to recommend approval to the zone. Okay, okay. the motion is to recommend approval for item 4B. Do you want me to say everything in that? <laughs> I think seven. I did. You already did. I think that covers. I think that covers. Okay, so the motion is to approve agenda item four B, and it was seconded. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, it's unanimous. Great. It's such a prominent building. Yes. <laughs> We'll paint our house in terms of you have to look at that. <laughs> that would be fun. All right, so agenda item C, 4C, Southern King Street. This is interesting. It's very interesting. interesting building. Well, it's not even a building, right? It's, it's a tree. Towers. Tree trees. Sure, this shouldn't go before Parks and Rex. It's good. <laughs> very interesting. Uh, yes, so uh, this is an early discussion to get some feedback from the board. Uh, let's mention in the staff report, we have had an application to construct a wireless facility. The current proposal is a bow tree, of a broadleaf tree. Um, so that that property is interesting in that the building that's on it and, and a portion of the lot behind that technically are not in the H, in the H district, but where they want to construct the tree, that part that's closer to Magnolia actually falls within the boundaries. Um, we have we had encouraged them to look at placing the, the equipment on top of the roof of the existing building um, to keep it out of the district. They have said that that is not something that's feasible for them. Uh, and with with these types of applications, you know, if they can provide proof to that, and there's our hands are her died. So I wonder how much latitude there is when you're dealing with the utility like this. Uh, it's not much. It's not much. Yeah, the, the FCC treats it as almost like a national defense item to have this infrastructure. So mm -hmm. it's it's given a lot of priorities and protections. Um, so we have um, been speaking with AT&T about it. They, because it's in the district, they know that it will require a evaluation by an ar a historic architect and then to come back before this board for a recommendation. Uh, we had given them the option to use a city consultant. They have instead chosen to use their own consultant and then pay for a peer review by one of the city's consultants. Um, so we are we are waiting on that to happen. They have asked for comments. So the idea is here, whatever discussion you might want to have about maybe some potential designs that you feel might be more in keeping with the, the character of the district. This is really different. It will be coming back. But one reason we want to put it on this meet, meeting is because um, the historic consultant that they did retain has sent out a letter asking for comments. They're doing it in some sort of like a need for review um, and ask if they have a 30 day comment period. And so the city can provide comments to that consultant that are presumably be taken into consideration when they do their report. And so we thought it would be a good time to get any feedback that you might have about what you might want them to consider while they're preparing their report. A sort of an early step, but then we would bring it back when we have more information on. I think I understand what you just said, Lisa. So they, they so their historic consultant gave us a 30 day notice that they were preparing a report and asked for any comments. Yeah. yeah. So if we, it'd be maybe easier, like another project, it would be easier because it would be more standard. This is an unusual yeah. Who's project. The consultant, do you know? No one I've ever heard of. Yeah, it may not. It may be someone that's looking at street views from. And who, whose land is it actually on? The not Peach and Pack Bell. Pac, the the, the, the AT Bell. It is yeah. Yeah. yeah, it is. So is that that like empty lot? Yeah, it's kind of an L shape to it. So um, it face it fronts both Magnolia and. And do they have other plans for that lot? I have pretty none. There's an option. Yeah, they just won't. I guess we've wanted to put parking there and they haven't been interested in doing that. We understand a lot of utilities run through the lot, so it makes it challenging oh, for the development. So at the very least, I think it would be good just to remind them in case they don't know that it is located in the historic district yeah. and to consider the impact that it might have on the historic district. Mm -hmm. 
It is kind of crazy because it's such a big lot and it's central to downtown. And right now it's kind of an eyesore with that woven fence that goes there. Um, but now the, I, the, the fence seems like a good thing to ride by today because <laughs> maybe it'll detract people from seeing, because none of the, I don't, in my opinion, none of the trees ever really look like they're disguising it and not to be able to look like right. a tower. So but as I speak, like wave, it'll make it look more like a tree. It's and it's right next it's to like the patio of the Italian restaurant, too, which is unfortunate. So that patio area of the new rustic will just be right next to this antenna tree. So the, if you had any other, the other thing we'd like feedback on is if there's any other idea that anyone has on camouflaging the antennas, just most of the things that you use to camouflage, like I think you, you gave them the water tower. Oh, I, I, oh, I oh, was going to show how, how tall is it? Sorry, Lisa. How tall are you supposed to be? 50 feet. 50 feet tall. So it's, it's going to be very tall. Um, yeah. That's the very tall thing there. downtown. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it's not really wow. a like a normal tree. No, I mean, no they I never do. Fly we'll we'll can get some advice from our cellular antenna. We have some legal experts that they could help us with crafting conditions to try to make it look as good as possible and to maintain it. That's the other thing is they fade and they don't look as good over time. Mm -hmm. And then the other, just so you know, the other plan for all of these towers is that other people co-locate and they re rent them out to other carriers. So eventually there's even more antenna up on them and we can't say anything about those. So it's good to make sure that the, the first approval is good and has a lot of camouflaging so that the other ones can also be camouflaged when mm -hmm. they come next. You know, I know this isn't really a heritage board, you know, territory but what about i mean you're going to have this major electrical array downtown i mean i'm sure there's do people know about this do, does the we'll be, know about this we've, okay, okay, go ahead so i posted a notice on that fence um, and then we did mail out just a heads up saying this is coming through let us know if you have any comments we mailed out a letter to everyone within a particular radius but it went within 500 feet Mm -hmm. uh, so I have had an email sent by somebody who is concerned about it. Uh, so I think people are aware. I don't know. I wonder how much people and are there's, aware. And there's nothing we can control about the radio frequencies. So if it meets the FCC's limits, um, there's we, there's no way to deny it based on a fear of radio frequency or radio frequencies. And this one is just a very, 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 very small fraction of what's allowed or what, what it would admit. So which is usually the case for these tech cellular towers. So it's just not a, it's not even it's not a, re, a possibility for the city to deny it on the basis of the radio frequencies. I'm just curious, how often do we see big towers like this in the middle of a town? Because usually it seems like they're more removed by the population size. So it, my thought first also was is hiding them in city hall better is hiding them in the church across the street better. But um, so that those are all things that could be options, but they have to be a certain height. They need coverage of a certain amount. So uh, the, the building next door has a lot of cellular equipment on it. They're just, there's not enough room left for more, but um, that's a pretty, fairly tall building. The and you actually have the at and building. The, yeah, the at building has, there's a little fake kind of addition at the top that's camouflaging a bunch of equipment. And that's why we really were hoping to just put another addition off the side of it, do anything to yeah. locate it there because no one notices those ones. Right. Uh, but they're, they're, yeah, they're saying that it's impossible. And then if they did do an addition, like they're still not getting the range because of trees and buildings and other things that are in the area. Yeah, so we don't really get to control where they locate it. Well, in a sense, in a certain sense, we do. And we have priority, we have, the city has made, um, like a hierarchy of where we want them located and this is one of the less uh, desirable locations and of, of course being next to residential is not usually that desirable too so the people that live right next to it might prefer this than to having something that's closer to them um, larger than a heritage board issue and yeah i mean they will they need a use permit approval so it will go to the, the planning commission as well so what would be an alternative, like way up on Mount Tam or someplace? They looked at a couple sites. I think there was a water tank near, was it Skylark? They were oh, yeah. on top. Basically, they, 
as a part of their application, they, they say, here's what the area we need to cover, and they have to demonstrate, okay, we've looked at, we've done our due diligence, and we've scoped out three or 400 places. What is this? Yeah, I was wondering. Well, so those are just the views for the renderings of. Oh, the I see. Okay. Got it. And then if you look up on the TV, this is the water tower that they've submitted for here. I thought maybe that's a better alternative. Than a like, fake tree. And sometimes, you know, old. Old time town yeah, has a water that. tower that's like, like Luxburg. Right. That was, I was thinking maybe there's something else. It, it has to be so large. Yeah, yeah. Because I'm thinking like maybe there might be a way to do it if you clad it in something that looks like an old water tower, it doesn't look like a plastic, you know, air filter or something. I mean, if you, if you did it in such a way that it actually looks like a water tower, it looks like something that is old, even though it's. Can you zoom in on it so they could see it better? Well, so you could, if you had any ideas like that, that's, um, mm -hmm. those are options. Other ways to camouflage. I, I almost feel like this is something that the public should weigh in on because this is going to affect everybody. This is not just like a party board siding or a driveway. This is a huge, huge item that people are going to see mm -hmm. as soon as they come into town. Right. Yeah, we could post this on the fence for comment. I think posting some pictures. The fence and then I think we tore it now. I didn't see it when we walked by today. Oh, and talk, I think getting it into the IJ, I think getting, I, I think, I'm not saying that to do this in, to prevent this from being built, but I just think to get it would be back. good for people to know what's happening. Yeah, and that way it doesn't blow back on the city in terms of like, well, you know, look what they're putting in here without telling us. Mm -hmm. I think as much as we can get it out there and have people aware of what is being proposed. And if in fact it will benefit them, that's the idea. So this sense of communication will be enhanced for everybody. You're talking about like the this phone communication? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's, that's what they're... Something. Four people from this new tower. Yeah. They have a gap in their coverage in this area, so that's what they're trying to fill here. Funny place to place it. And 50 feet. Man, that's like five stories, right? Yeah. Four. I mean, it'll be the biggest thing, tallest thing anywhere. In the and it has to be that diameter. I mean, it can't just be like a little tower. Or... They do have to be pretty, I've heard, especially with things like flagpoles, they have to be very. Wide flagpoles to fit all the, the wires and equipment oh. and things like that that run up through them. And I think with this water tower one, it's also wide because, like we said, eventually other carriers can install equipment there. So they need room on the inside to place different antennas and, and radios and whatnot. It's not like a bad location. Yeah. And how does this benefit the city? I'm just curious having this. I, do we do they pay extra utility taxes or do do they? Have like any kind of supplemental fees that they would pay putting this? And they'll pay. They they'll pay the they pay the permit fee, uh, but there's no there's no wow. other brutal bit. The property owner gets revenue. So does it have to be near when they rent something here? Is that part of it? Well, yeah. So like like I said, they they have to. One of the documents that they have to provide to the city is examining other locations that would work. That would also provide them the same coverage that they're looking for, just in you know by placing the tower somewhere else. Um, and they're they're saying that this is the only feasible location for them to get the coverage. I don't remember all of the the places that they looked at other than that water tank up on the hill. Well, I, I think we don't have enough information at this point. We're still waiting on the historic architect, both their report and a review of it. And I just think this is this is a bigger issue than the Heritage Board alone. And I I don't feel like I want to put forth any motion on this. We're not looking for a motion, just okay. discussion on design. Okay. Um, the only the only thing I would know with these is there is kind of a shot clock. There's a time limit to the amount of time a city can review it. Um, and in this case, I think it's 150 days from the date they submit. We have okay. to have them. When did they submit? Middle of September, I believe. So the clock is running. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, it's been stopped and started with incomplete notices and whatnot. Yeah, we believe right now that the clock has stopped and those get stuck. But I, I will just if something people, once it's there, they're going to have a fit. Yeah. Going, it's just going to be something people want to see. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Yeah, I think I think part of what AT&T or this project needs to do is finance or, you know, just like we have homeowners pay for the historic architects to review. I think that they need to do a public outreach program. I mean, I know that's way beyond the Heritage Board's um, responsibility, but my sense as a Larkspur citizen is that I would want to know about that. I would want to have the opportunity to weigh in on it, you know, whether it be the design or just the location or the size. And um, because, you know, as you know, I mean, as smaller towns, you know, we don't like to have things kind of hoisted onto us. And that's how this project feels, that AT&T is just saying, you know, the FCC or whoever the governing body is, is saying, you must have this. And I, I don't think people are going to Sorry, Joel, I don't think true. Every, every wireless application like this I've ever been a part of, I think nobody really likes them. The, the applicants are usually quite militant in their, their approach to it, I would say, and they really rely on the benefits that they get from the federal yeah, government. Because they don't live in the community. Also, that. Yeah. Well, what do you think? Couldn't they put it like alongside the highway or someplace where it's not going to be this huge visible? They're, the, what they've said is that they don't get the they won't get the coverage from a from an installation out there to cover the downtown here. This coverage is mainly for Larkspur's citizenry. Yeah. Is that what they're talking about? It'd be much better up in the hills though, in the trees than sticking out in a community. I hear they say it doesn't work, but I'd love to see what they found didn't work with that water tower. I guess that might be one thing that you can say is consider locations outside of. Actually, wasn't Wilson at the top of Wilson Way in the open space one of the yeah. locations, which seems like a horrible place too? <laughs> be but great. is it better? Yeah, like now you're just choosing between bad alternatives, but I think that's what, and that's why we brought, which is a more opportunity for the public or anyone to give input. It's, is helpful. Is there anything that anyone else could think of? But my lark around the water tank may not may not be as bad as having this downtown. I don't think all space people. Well, and I imagine by the town of Pius, which is tall. There, yeah, you know, they have a number there, and that they oh, could yeah, be, do. There, there's a lot on that building, <laughs> so it, it's not covering where they need to cover that far over there. But yeah, there's a lot of. A lot of into there's a lot of tenants in the city, um, but a lot of them are camouflaged like that on buildings, they wouldn't notice them. Uh -huh. So, can you imagine if they were going to put a 50 foot tower in downtown Ross? Uh, yeah, well, there was a really, really, really tall one, not really, really, yeah, it was 50 foot um, proposed in San Anselmo, and people were very upset, and they still haven't done it yet. I'm surprised, but um, it, it wasn't received well. Mm -hmm. Well, I think this is just the beginning of probably some public outreach that the at t would have to do. It almost feels like there needs to be a public hearing. And maybe we can schedule our own. We, um, maybe we can schedule our own public workshop just to inform people and okay. get feedback, even yeah. if it's not something that's intended for a hearing on the project. Probably isn't about Has the city council seen seen it? I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think they have. Okay. We have to give the timings that if someone appeals the decision of the planning commission, we can still get all those decisions within that time. Okay. Mm -hmm. Wow. So the sooner the better. Yeah. Well, or yeah. <laughs> I mean, definitely, we have to get all the the all the any hearings done quickly. Well, I guess. I guess from the Heritage Board standpoint, could we say that um, we feel that this is a larger item that needs to have public input? And maybe I'm trying to think of any formal response that we can mm -hmm. have to this. Yeah, because the recommendation doesn't have to be in favor when when you review these applications. We would just bring it forward with whatever recommendation you make. So okay. and you don't have to make a recommendation tonight. It looks when we bring it back to you, just keep that in mind that 
it's just a recommendation. So you can make whatever recommendation you want. If you want to recommend against it, you can. Why well, don't think we meet so infrequently? I yeah. think we better do. Yeah, it would be good to have a, um, to know that the record that you're available for a meeting. Yeah. Um, get some meetings on the calendars, maybe to hold the dates so that because it will move really quickly mm -hmm. when we do have to bring it for a hearing, and then we definitely would want to bring it. Okay. Here and here. Okay. Can we ask them to tell us the alternative site stuff? The one. Anyway, you can get more information on that. We have their report. On okay. Well, at least on the few sites that they've checked out. Yeah. I'd be interested in knowing what else they looked at. Yeah. So what kind of emotion? I think it's just those three. Yeah. I feel like you should almost make a statement. This one is the historic history. Sort of the historic history can this point. Yeah, they're going I feel like they're going to override us, whatever we say. Yeah, but I think we should say I agree with that. We don't. We, because it closes out other options for that property. Right. In the that's true, too. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's really true. Uh, no one's going to put a building right next to it. Yeah. yeah. Or a park. Yeah. I try to camouflage it. I think it would be such a, an eyesore. I mean, that's not all. I just, I can't get it. Um, so my feeling is that we would, we would say that we don't approve it and that, um, we are alternatives, but as it stands now from the materials that we have, that heritage board does not approve this project for what it's worth. I mean, I have a feeling like we'll just be steamrolled over anyway. This is off the record, but I think it's important to, for us to at least say, look, this is important. We are the heritage board. This is downtown Larkspur, and it doesn't include this gigantic power. Yeah, I don't know if we can approve or not approve. We don't support. We object. We, yeah, we don't support it. We yeah. don't support it. No, because even I mean, even if we sort of said, OK, maybe. I think it would take away some of the legitimacy of this board for future projects. Someone says, oh, well, you were okay with that AT&T tower, so how can you complain about me changing my, my window treatments? You know, I think it's important that we go on record as to saying that we don't support this project. Okay. Great. Uh, I'll move that we do not support. Is that what we don't do? I don't think you need to, but. Oh, okay. So, so it's just. So we're, we, have the, we have the feedback for. Moving forward, it's helpful for us. Correct. Okay. But just make sure it's in the notes. So if somebody goes to check the the agenda notes. The yeah, it'll all be recorded in the minutes. So. Yeah. Uh, I think that's everything on the business items. There's one potential administrative approval for the new projects. Sure. Um, so what what's yeah, sure. I'll give you the report here. So, um, kind of similar to what we just talked about with that 25 ward project, we've noticed that the, the municipal code, the way it's written for what requires design review at one level, uh, is very restrictive when it comes to things in the H district. And for good reason, for the most part, I think we would all agree. Um, we found that there are some very limited things that we think staff could approve that. Would not incur a you know a, a hefty permit fee or the requirement to have a, something evaluated if it's for a approach that's not contributing to the district or not not in the district but just in the that heritage excuse me not in the national register district but in the the H district itself like 25 ward was so um, the idea and I've kind of included just a couple bullet points in the staff report of what we were thinking so. It's just like 25 ward additions of decks and other easily reversible additions or alteration like awnings to buildings that are not contributing to the district. Um, let's see, small projects with for structures that are not contributing in the H district where it's not easily visible from Magnolia Avenue. Uh, minor changes that have been reviewed by the historic consultant and found to comply with the Secretary of the Interior standards. 
uh, replacing roofing with a similar roofing material, installation of mechanical and service equipment on a roof, and changes to exterior colors like we were just talking about. Mm -hmm. um, and the idea here is that it would just allow for property owners to upkeep and improve their property without incurring fees by the city or the consultant and kind of a way to reduce bureaucratic barriers to, to improving some of these buildings that are not quite as protected as, as some of the other ones. Um, so this is just a really early preliminary discussion to kind of gauge what your thoughts are on things like this. If there's projects that you think maybe could be a staff uh, level approval or how you feel about that. Um, if you're interested in that, we would return to you at another meeting with more definite language that we would look to put into the code about exactly what might be approved administratively. Does that happen in planning commission items or is this just specifically for historic properties? Well, so this one would just be for things in the H district, you know, not contributing. There, if you're not a historic building or a historic property, the code is, I wouldn't say very permissive, but you can do more things to a, you know, a, a structure that's not historic without any, like you can do additions to a building as long as they don't need a variance or they're under a certain height, things like that. Um, so we weren't looking to change any of that. It's just kind of giving some of these buildings that, that are in the district, but not nationally recognized or historic themselves on the inventory, uh, the ability to make some changes. And I just want to say that I, I would also just like you to consider even changes to historic ones that have been approved by the, the city's architectural historian. So for example, the, um, Building that we the twenty five or not twenty five more the ones four sixty nine. Let's say they wanted to change those windows and put in wood windows that the architectural historian was saying is more appropriate for the building. Like it would, we have to bring that through your board and then go through. Right? It seems like a lot. It's a lot of work to do something that someone's saying is actually an improvement. So it just it, it would be nice if you could just consider that. Um, just there might be little minor things that are made to a building that are supported by the architectural story and that would be nice to not have to bring through a whole hearing. So why multiple hearing process? What's the um, advantage of not having it come through the hearing? Is it the delay because we don't just the delay or because you don't meet often, right? Like it's a lot of delay for something that you're likely to support anyway because the architectural story is saying it's an improvement. Because yeah. The, some of them are very, or some of them are very minor things. Or even if Pico wants to change their awning, which they've asked about, um, that has to go through. That's too. So it's does the historian have to say anything on something like that? Well, because I guess we then that's part of it is we'd have to determine if the building's even eligible to be historic or not. And um, I mean, I guess that's the case anyway. I think for the awning, since it's a removable change, we probably we can get a historical report, it would just be, are you guys okay with changing the awning? But I mean, I have less concern if the historic review's been done. Mm -hmm. Someone's saying it's an improvement. I, I don't really find much that I could object to. The one thing that kind of screams after we just had this discussion today was changes to exterior colors. Um, it sounds like you'd likely want to have some input on those. But if the historic architect approved the colors, would they need to have it come back to the board? Yeah, I'll tell you so that's okay. That's a good question. Yeah. And I think, I mean, the historic architects don't always agree no. between each other. No. And um, I mean, because it doesn't change the cost to the owner, right? Because they still have to pay for the report. They still have to pay. They, the they have to pay an additional. So let's say the report, like for Forest Minty Magnolia, the report was about thirty five hundred dollars. They have to pay an additional thirty five hundred dollars to come to you. So it does that cost to the project. Oh, they they have to pay to come to us, right? Because it costs staff time to set up these meetings and do the staff report and provide a public notice, do okay, the minutes of the not meeting, not all the like work involved in having a meeting. So for a small project, all of a sudden it really it's, increases their cost, right? Mm -hmm. So I mean, there might be a different alternative, like. The city subsidizes the fee for the Heritage Board review of minor project. That could be another twist on this to make it not so onerous for small projects. I know that this is this might be can be just an option. Yeah, I'm just saying, I'm not sure that's such a good solution either. Yeah, and but if we're meeting on a regular basis, which I think we should, we should start 
hitting on the calendar, like the third Thursday or whatever works, um, we'd be meeting anyway. That would be much easier. If you were meeting regularly, we could just yeah. tell someone you're having a meeting in a month, you'll have to wait a month. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. think that would make it much better. So even the minor things, they can wait a month. Yeah. But if it's multiple months, it, it starts to become a month. Yeah, no. Okay, so I think, yeah, I think what you're saying makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. To me, it does. Because if it is like an awning or, or maybe putting some flower pots out or something that's temporary, that's not going to really affect the overall appearance of the building, um, and the historic architect has reviewed it, and approved it. I think that probably releases some of the necessity of having the board review. But I think if we're meeting once a month, we're meeting on a regular basis on a cycle, then I mean the delay would be 30 days. And that's probably the amount of time it would take to get the report anyway. So um I don't know. I mean is there I thought we were meeting quarterly. Is there a change in that? That but it's only if you I thought too if you had a if you had a monthly meeting scheduled it could always be canceled if there's no items yeah but if you had a monthly meeting scheduled and something popped up that needs the review then we could That's hold it. the hearing and that way everyone can kind of plan on it I mean I've had two people two members of the public that have reached out to me separately and um, let us know when the next meeting is going to be and you know and it would be nice to be able to say. We're meeting like we did in the early days. We're meeting such and such a, a week, the third Thursday every month at six o'clock City Hall, and then and then you you become it's almost like an open door policy where people just know that the heritage <clears throat> board is going to be here, and you know maybe the meetings will be really short, or maybe there'll be projects that we have to review. But I I feel like getting back on the calendar is is going to be important, especially with City Hall and issues coming up. Oh, does that cause a problem budget wise for the city? No. Or, no. Okay. No. I mean, I just if we if we really don't have any items, then just say right. cancel it. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But with that, do you think allay some of the concerns of it would be helpful for us if we knew that there was regular meetings coming up. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, that it would be helpful to have some staff approval of minor things just because it's either either way that it definitely helps to have. It helps to have, a, it would, that would be a good alternative if you don't want the staff approval of things. What about a list of, like, Alex was starting to read off some items that could be rubber stamped, you know, with historic architect approval, like the awnings. But maybe if we had a, a list at the next meeting of things that you recommend could be, um, you know, reviewed independently or approved independent from the board. That way we yeah. can kind of see how, how this would work. Yeah. Yeah, I, I can definitely do that. Um, we found a good document from the Secretary of the Interior that covered some great items like that. So I can. Oh, is that the one you already have on here or something more detailed that you sent to us? You sent us, you gave us the mm -hmm. samples. You had the decks, the small projects, minor changes. Oh, you did the list that's in the report here. Yeah, I pulled it, I pulled some of these from that. It's a, when I was, that document is a little bit more expensive. It's not just about what, what, the, something that, that is easy to to reverse. It covers a lot of things, not just things that are um, possibly you know done at a lower level of review, but it also talks about you know proper treatments for for uh, historic siting and things like that, and other repair and maintenance and things uh, options. Because I guess it would be good for for you guys to have guidance too, right? So that way you could know when do we call in the historic architect or when can we just evaluate or when does it need to go before the board it'd be nice for you to uh, it's almost like three columns you know things that are automatically left to the, the desk and things that have to go to the architect and then things that get kicked up to us and then of course there's the planning commission but um i guess it would be good to kind of know that hierarchy sure i have one question here on changes to exterior colors I somehow thought color was something. <laughs> we have to look. I have to look. I mean, yeah, I. I can't remember if it's covered specifically or not. It's not discussed in the in the. I don't think it's discussed in the heritage preservation chapter. I'd have to double check, but I don't, I don't remember seeing it. But it, but it does, the heritage preservation 
board has to review anything that has a discretionary permit. Yeah. And does design review require? I don't think so. Just but maybe does a review of. I don't think on the design a, review on the H district. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, the, the way the municipal code is written right now, I mean, they're doing anything in the H district triggers a the board review. So uh, well, but it doesn't call out paint. It talks about uh, anything that's beyond repair and maintenance, you know, ordinary repair and maintenance requires a review. But painting might be considered ordinary yeah. repair and maintenance. <laughs> and so my question was, do we have a color palette that we've talked about? I don't ever recall. Downtown. I, the downtown plan, I think, has some. I want to say there's some talk about like earth tones or something. Yeah, yeah. the downtown plan's kind of on the older side, so it might have been. Mm -hmm. Oh, I think there is something. Yeah, there. yeah, I can. I would, when we bring this back, I can, I can find that. Yeah, what were you saying? We would want to run this by maybe Jerry Holland or. See what their input is and what they can. See. You know, so, I mean, you look at the photographs, they're black and white. I mean, we don't know what hue the um, shed was. You know, I mean, we just don't know, right? Because I don't think that's in, in the building records. And and even if it were, I don't think Sherman Williams was around, you know, 130 years ago. So, right. Somehow I recall it ex excluded color because it was so easily repaired. Mm. Not like a major change, you can paint over it. It's offensive. It's here. Should we move on to the business items? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we've gotten feedback from you. We can definitely take that in. Okay, so business item. 5A, the West Baltimore Steps. Um, I, I think at this point, it's more questions than just decisions or discussion. I think the question is, what would we do to the steps? How do we go about doing it? How much cost? Those are the steps at the end of Baltimore. Baltimore mm -hmm. On the other side of the bike path. And there's, yeah. two, there's two stone pillars there. Mm -hmm. They're very cool. And I mean, there's a few missing stones, but overall they're pretty well intact. There's some weeds growing up, but the, the columns are still standing. It's a very cool site. So we're wondering if they need to be. Or I, I checked with Jerry and she said they are under our purview. They would be considered historic. They are, they're on the inventory, yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that, I mean, how do, because normally we deal with projects where the homeowner is doing the work and paying for it, and we're just reviewing their plans. But in this case, it's city owned property that's historic that we would be maintaining. So I'm not sure how that would work and where the money would come, for, come from to do this kind of work. What needs to be done? I, I'm kind of blindsided. I don't know what, where the discussion came from. Um, it was on one of our one of our meetings. Do you know where the steps are? Mm -hmm. Okay, so they're they're kind of decrepit mm -hmm. right now. There's weeds growing yeah. up, and there's they're missing some So, um, the thought is that maybe we could clean them up, re replace some of the stones somehow. Maybe because there's going to be a historic plaque. Mm -hmm. Right for the Baltimore station, but if there's a way to just sort of clean up the steps and make them more of an entrance to the old railroad tracks, which yeah. is now the bike path. Got it. So how do you how do you do that? How do you pay for it? And what are the steps? Well, there are two sources of funding. I think one is the money that the city has found from our book sales. Very nicely has kept track with that. So there is some money from the store. Helen High Camp Fund with the Larkspur Community Foundation mm -hmm. money. And we can certainly apply okay. for that. And I that's think. just down the street from where she used to live. Yes. Yeah. 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 So I mean I can't imagine it'd be a million dollars. 
I think it's just a matter of weeding and then getting some of that old bluestone, that quarry bluestone. Just in terms of the, the maintenance and weeding and cleaning, I, I mean, I can let Julian, the poet or director, know that you know, you're interested in seeing that and maybe he can help us through go out there and yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. see what's involved. Oh, there. Yeah. Yep, that's it. I don't know if there's anything that we could do to connect it to the street, or I'm sure as we proceed, and maybe if, if we talk to Julian, he might have some ideas of how we kind of bring that area back to life. A few years ago, I was approached by uh, Mike Polk, I don't know if you know him, but um, he, he came to me on the street and asked me about the idea of putting some sort of visual, almost outline, I mean, he was sort of fabricating it and um, it was a very cool idea, but his idea was to kind of create sort of a, some sort of way to um, illustrate the building that had been there at one time, the station, and kind of almost almost like a pavilion with almost like um, the structure or the outline of the original building. And I know that's a little esoteric, but I think you know, when you talk about the history of that part of Larkspur, which was so tied to the trains, that's where the tracks split. That's where the water tower was. Um, if there's some way we can bring that a little more into the public consciousness and, and update it a little bit. Help from the historic architect. Maybe, or maybe okay. some examples of other similar projects that have been done. Okay. You could email them. And... Yeah, I think it'd be good to get some advice because we don't want like someone to go power wash it and ruin something that's historic about it. Right. <laughs> I would be worried about that with the maintenance crew. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, no, I think there might be some, potential. it might be just good to get some advice on what to do. Right. I'll tell you a funny story about those steps, too, because they are just down the hill from me. One night, my husband and uh, a couple of friends were we were going. It was New Year's Eve, and we were on our way to downtown Larkspur, and we went to walk on Acacia, and there was a taxi right between those columns, and it was teetering on the steps. And I think the guy had tried to turn between those pillars and he got oh stuck and he was waiting for a tow truck. But I think that's the kind of thing that if those pillars were like, you know, brought to life and maybe even a maybe even a plaque, a historic plaque on them, then it would be pretty unmistakable. You know, it's not a street, it's just so maybe that's why that one pillar is leaning. We're like, are we safe? It's New Year's Eve, but I, yeah. Anyway, all right, so um, do we need to do more on the discussion or? I can reach out to, to Julian about maintenance activities that can go on there. We can look at budget for the board, reach out to a consultant and see if they can offer some advice. Mm -hmm. So that would be something that we discuss at our next meeting? Or you would let us know? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I don't think it would take a consultant that long, but they probably need to approve the disbursement of their funds. Maybe not. Maybe. I don't know what they're doing. Okay. We'll look into it. I mean, if we can. Okay. Great. All right. I cured folks' discussion. Well, you were going to come up with a QR code, but I found out how to. Right. Uh, this is a QR code on the plaques that we want to do because it seems to be in bad. QR codes everywhere, even though it personally drives me crazy. But um, that's when we've been to a restaurant and my husband has to find wine on the QR oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But, but at any rate, it is the way things are done. And it's very easy to do on the plaque. And so <clears throat> I could send it to you. I did a draft, just a link to the city staff, to the city site into the our town and their maps and all kinds of information on the city website. But what would would that be approvable or would you suggest something else? If if you want, I, I guess when I was putting this together, I 
if help we would just we're discussing where we want to look. I don't think there's any problem having a QR code added to the plaques. It sounds like Kaylee would totally able to do that. The city hall and the www. Yeah. But they have to read it and take a picture of that. But the QR code they can is the QR code just gonna go to the city site? Like yeah. general historical information, or is it going to have more extensive information of each plaque? Well, when I talk to the fabricators, they said usually just you link to some other source. So, I mean, one of the things I had thought was, did you want it to link directly to the Heritage Preservation page? And that would that would bring you what's here. Yeah, that's yeah. Okay. And we, but we could set up an individual page for each of those plaques I know. to provide more information more on what's on the plaque. Which is so nice. That would be hard. Go to take you website. a website that just you gives you more information on that location. So you, on the website, you think you have information on each? Well, we could we could put information. If, you, if oh, there's okay. more information on those the sites, we could have more. Yeah, yeah, like nice things that wouldn't have been on the plaque yeah, right. for each of the sites. So no, we would have to write that out. But in the meantime, it could, I mean, we can, we can set it up for that, but then have it, like, until it's actually written, it could go somewhere generic, and that right. would be easy to read. Well, we can start thing. with the page that you have there, the historic preservation page, because I'm sure someone looking at one of those plaques doesn't need to know our meeting agendas, and... No, you know, no, yeah, they're probably looking for more, more information, change, but yeah. the historic preservation no, page is perfect, it. yeah. I can create, like, a the headings you see here and just have one that says historic plaque information and yeah. link to yes. whatever the document is for the yes. particular yes. plaque with whatever the information is. Well, that would be great. And then yeah. I can send it to the fabricators because they can make a code, you know, make those little designs. Yeah, they'll do a QR code on this. So. Yeah. And then, of course, you can just change it and update it, right? Oh, the QR not. code would just take them to this page, that page. And then if you need to update it, you can, because it still goes to that same Yeah, page. I think it would be better to have it go to a general landing page than an individual plaque, exactly. because then you risk a chain exactly. breaking the QR code. Exactly. Yeah. So and this is a good so start. have the same for every plaque. Right. Yeah, and they would all go to one place, and then from there. They would be separate. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Dive down so from there. A lot of them. So the QR code would take them to this historic or heritage preservation, and then huh. you'd have Underneath where it says archives, you might have, or volunteer opportunities, maybe above that you'd have historic well, sites. just go to a preservation plaque site, right? Well, so I think from what I'm hearing, we would have the QR code on the plaque. You scan it, you land at this page, and then, I don't know, somewhere towards the top where it's easier to see, we say you historic plaque information. Yeah, we can adjust this page. Okay. But if we were to link it, if I was to adjust this page and add a a link to a specific plaque and then link and that's okay. where the QR code goes. If there's a change to the city website, then you might skip not functioning. The system. But if it's the page that he should oh, if it's okay. on site, we could always have it go find it. We could always have it go to this page, but then we have the opportunity to do something better for the plaques. On mean? this page. So if if we had a page set up a, like it's just a blank, even a blank page set up, and all of them went to that page. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. That that okay. page could automatically go here until there's something set up, but then it could also be set up in the future to be its own plaque page or information page. That's that's not so generic. So could you send me whatever code I would need? Well, I can. I I, I can go. I can edit the website. I can add a. Uh, like a landing page for a plaque yeah. for the plaques, okay. and then we can we can set that up via QR. Okay. And we can send it over okay. to the so it wouldn't be this page; it would be a different page. I could we could make like a plaque. sub page to this one. The, and then otherwise, it's always going to be stuck coming to this page, mm, even if you want to do something else with it. Yeah, well, people also, I mean, when they get there, are going to be, that's not where I thought I was. I, I wanted to get more information on this location. Right. Yeah. I didn't want to yeah. hear what the boards do. <laughs> right. Yeah. 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 Volunteer opportunities. Yes. I think it should have a plaque page in that. Yeah. Yeah. But would the plaque page be just, just so I understand, it would be like another heading under the Heritage Preservation page? I, I, you could do it that way. Well, it could either be not visible at all and just be it's or, it's thing. That. or you could have it. It might be nice to have things people may not know about the plaques. Either. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But then when they're hitting their QR code directly to the right. plaque of the QR. Okay. But on this site, 
they could, you know, you have a link to that. Because the other thing I was going to say is on, on this, this web page, there's a really great map with all the historic yeah. buildings and there's wa a walking tour um, link or heading and then there's uh, videos. So there is stuff that it's not a plaque per se to a specific location, but there are things that might be fun for a reader to refer to later. I need to decide right now which way it goes. But I think if you have a plaque page, it could bring you to this page if we see so you at least have options to go either way. Oh, okay. Okay. So that one would, if they zoomed on the plaque page, it could just take you to this page. Or if you thought if people didn't want to see that, then you could change it and do something special sure. on the flag page. Like it would yeah. give you more options. Whatever way you guys think is best. So, okay, we want we want a QR code that links you to a page that discusses the plaques that also links you to this that you would go to off the QR code, and then once or you're on that page, the QR code might take you here until the other pages. Well, the QR code takes you to that page. But that page automatically takes you here until something is put on that plaque page. Because <laughs> some things, someone has to develop the content for the plaque page too, and yeah, pictures yeah. and something interesting. I just feel so. I mean, anytime is just zapping you here. What do you think, Alex? The only thing I don't, I, and this is just me not knowing much about QR codes, is if we had it land here, I'm worried that it would print out like a QR code of a certain design, and then if we wanted it to link somewhere else. Well, that's we why that's why it, that's why I don't want it here because we'd never be able to change it again because yeah. the QR code. Oh yeah, can you check? Can you read? I don't think you can. I don't think have an idea actually. I think you can. I think it maybe it's programmable. That's a good question that we'll have to ask. <laughs> well, would you, it, you have somebody to ask about that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we could ask our IT department. Yeah. All right. Yeah. It it may be flexible and we don't have anything to worry about. They could all be different and we could use them whatever way we want. What I was setting up was just going to the city website and under our town, there's history stuff. Mm -hmm. That's as far as the links I've done, but you're saying there could be other links. Or another we can make we can make other a whole site for thing, yeah. Right. And then the fabricator will do the QR thing. Yeah. They know how to do that. Yeah, I wonder if getting bigger in touch with the IT person. I mean, do you think they could work together to come up with a oh the the um I the this is the person who's fabricating the facade. Yeah. Well, I don't think they care where the QR code yeah, goes. <laughs> We're just thinking that what's the, how many. It would be nice to have the QR code be as flexible as possible. So yeah. if you only wanted to do something that was related to the plaque, you could, or you could just direct people to the generic website. It could be nice to have some flexibility. Yeah, yeah. program in yeah. case someone, places. in case people were annoyed that they were just going to the regular website when they wanted to go get more information on that site. Right. Or there might be a lot of great photos that you could add on any of those particular yeah, sites right. that we just don't have room for on the plaque. Yeah. Yeah, we can build the site. We can build the site to have a lot more information. Okay, so you'll find a site. We'll even zoom in on the pictures more, and we just need more information to see. Like, does that just mean one code or a different? I don't know. Like, yes. how hard it is, how flexible it is. If, I mean, it, it might make, it might make sense to put a different one on each one. Yeah, we could to have a longer, more flexibility, even if they all get directed to the same one for a while. No. Well, the thing is, you can't change once a QR. Code. Yeah, that's a, but it might. But we could oh, a link could always go to another spot. Right, you can but, relink. Yeah, but you can't if it's all going to the heritage board. We can't ever change yeah, that. We're just not going the heritage board forever. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Talk to we could just talk to IT. IT we might know more about QR codes. Yeah. Okay. And I'll try to look at them when you go out and about and see them, like at the park. I wonder if there's takes you to more information. I feel like, or the ones on Mount Tam, I wonder what they, I guess I never look at them when I go to them. Yeah, I don't even <laughs> use them on the mountain. Huh. So I, they just take you to. I haven't, I haven't seen them in the signs. They might not be on those ones. Yeah. I was just in Calistoga and I, I took a picture. Oh, and there's one on, there. same with even the ones on um, Red Hill and San Anselmo. Do they 
give you more information or just take you to the open space committee. <laughs> yeah, the Calistoga, they don't have QR codes. That's just one example, but I mean, we still have a QR code. No. no. So we're going to be cutting in. <laughs> yeah. Right. Until QR codes go out of <laughs> yeah, go out of style. Well, they're just going to sharpen and mark them out. Oh yeah, trail sign one, and they, they it looks like they might have more. They have more information. Well, I think it's exciting to so, photos and upload them onto the website. And, yeah, I figure if we can get from the sign to the city website, then we can go. From the, or they can go from there. Yeah. There's a, yeah, because there's a lot of good information. And I, I feel like the city website needs some more archived photos. There's more to, to put into that, mm -hmm. more content. Are we ready to move on to the next business item? Sure. Okay, volunteer effort for historic interviews. Don't know anything about Well, that. this is, um, I met Joan Sustat one story. Oh. She said a lot of names. Uh, yeah. And Maryland River, we just were talking about heritage things. And we used to have a heritage committee. This was a long time ago. And we started out by doing these interviews. And there's still now more people with it, like Dennis Gillardi, who could to interview, yeah. you know, local. or current history, our mayors, just in general. But we need kind of a little committee to start doing that. And it wouldn't be anything official. It's a, just a, Are they video interviews? I'm just curious, because you can they keep those in your yeah, historic Well, they were too. then. It was just Ellen Highcamp writing them out. But there's a couple of videos on the website, on the Heritage website. You can see them. Helen's one of them. Uh -huh. There's like six of them. Oh, of interviews. Uh, of interviews. Yeah, that's oh. pretty cool. So yeah, I think this is something that would be really I just think it's so something we may need to, and it would just be kind of under our auspices, but not official. Mm -hmm. Does that take money, budget? No. Yeah. It'd just be volunteers to okay. things. So I think it's a great Joe idea. wants to get it together and yeah. Yeah, there. Yeah, that's that's our neighborhood walkthroughs. Well, for one, at one point we divided up among us to go see all of the H properties. You were on the board. Oh yes. And I just thought with new people, maybe it's a good idea to do it again. You know, each of us take 10 properties or whatever and go just look at them. And Jerry Holland had a little form for us to fill out. Mm -hmm. And Kristen gave us the spreadsheets with the addresses on them. Yeah. What their yes. status was. That might be something to talk to Alex about and show him. You know, I think I could, I mean, I could definitely get you the list by neighborhood. And I think it, the table probably has at least the, the um, grading that it was given when they did it in, I think, 2008. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah, it just it's just something for all of us to get familiar with mm. what's on the national register. Mm -hmm. And there's some things that we haven't covered yet. Yes, and there might be places that we would yeah. recommend. Mm -hmm. That's but, something that we would need to specifically. Wanted to. I mean, it sounds like two different projects you're talking about there. One is everyone getting. Taking ten homes, going to look at them, being familiar. Another one is going to neighborhoods and trying to that hasn't been reviewed, right? Those are two different projects. Well, I don't yes. know that we're yes. competent enough to. Well, I guess we could go see something and say, well, that looks historic. I mean, I right. don't know that's what, what we're we did find before. A lot of I mean, that's what you guys did before. Right? That's what we did before. We had already declared historic. Right, but there were there were addresses that hadn't been looked at. Remember, we were finding properties that had been reviewed. So. Well, 
Maybe this is something we should talk about with the full. Yeah, I think it might I think. Be. Yeah. So let's pump that for next time. Okay. If that's okay with you. Oh, yeah. It just <laughs> random thoughts on the um, board member reports. And uh, I just have an update on City Hall. Um, two things. Um, one thing about the library, the 110 square foot archive room. Mm -hmm. um, that's lovely that that's accrued, but I think we also would like to think about maybe a, a like that eventually with City Hall with the library space and make it part of the historic building and have this, you know, our oh. archive room being an extension where we keep the archives, we have artifacts, and I had discussed in that special meeting that I zoomed with with City Hall um, the idea of preparing sort of a presentation full of examples of where there's been historic museums, buildings, sort of collections put together. And it seems to me that almost every town has a dedicated building that is historic and it has artifacts displayed. And so I kind of semi committed myself to making a, a kind of a compilation of some of those things just to kind of show city council how examples of how it's done. So that's something that that I'm going to take on is just maybe a PowerPoint presentation, something that's not too crazy. I've been taking pictures over the last six months or so every time I travel and I see a, a really cool historic space, I'll take a picture of it. Um, and maybe we can start collecting, I'm sure, on the internet, Pinterest or whatever, there's probably ways to find other examples. The thing that I wanted to do um, related to the um, City Hall and the archive room, the second thing, and I think this is important, is November 6th, there will be a charrette. Am I saying that correct? Or, that's what I heard that that was. Yeah, I heard that they, they because it was November 6th, um, so close to the election that they, they're not going to have it on that day. Great. Because <laughs> I heard that they weren't, and then I heard from one of the Jones that Scott Kendall wanted to have it November 6th. So I didn't know the current status. The, the current status is they're going to find a date that is, works better for Good. people. Okay. But that would be an excellent opportunity for people to come and say they'd like to see a historic room at City Hall. Yes. Like that's I think exactly the kind of input they're looking for is what what do people want to see at City Hall? Um uh, that that is another volunteer thing that we were thinking of is used to be Melba Anderson with accession things, you know, officially somebody gives something to Larkspur and she writes it in and has a code number. Nobody's doing that. Just check the closet out here and see what's Inventory, inventory. Yeah, because the people that were doing that are just gone. Right. And I think our inventory is kind of spread around. You could right. There's a safe deposit box with some artifacts in it. Wait, I just discovered there is a list. We have a list in our files of where some outside things are. Like there's a quilt that was made by St. Patrick's students of oh, I knew downtown. That either. Oh, okay, yeah, I kind of vaguely remember that. Um, that's at someone's house, and then there's some other documents. But they have a list that says where, whose okay, house these yeah. things are located at. <laughs> but, and I think the story closet isn't touched very much, but there probably are things that we just get, like we got the railroad ties, like that's not listed anywhere. And, right, right, I remember right, that. Right, we something have a, a system for accessioning. Yeah, we don't really have, we haven't been updating yeah. like that. So those are volunteer opportunities. We'll have to volunteer opportunities. <laughs> Hunt them up. Yeah. So I think that's all kind of it's sort of tying together because I think that is an important part. And I mean, especially if we're going to be seeing more public outreach with this tower that wants to be that's being proposed. I think the public is, I mean, I think people are going to wake up and see that there's some big changes. The library is going to start construction. I mean, there, people are going to be seeing changes in Larkspur, and we want to be part of that awareness. We want people to so to walk by this building and say, this is fantastic. We are so lucky to have this building. Or where can we go to find 
you know, heritage books or old photographs or we want to be part. Of, and I think the plaques are going to be part of that. I mean, anyway, I think it's an exciting time. Um, and that's all I have to say about my board member report. Okay, I liked it. Uh, I've been taking pictures for six months. <laughs> I have now. I just have to organize them. Anything else that we need to do? Do you like? I think we covered a lot. Two hours. Yes. Do we want to pick? Do we need to wait for everyone to be here? What day and what week we're going to try to commit to having a meeting going forward? Number. I think we had discussed this a little while ago, and I feel like we had said the fourth Thursday. I think the third Thursday is a Parks and Rec Commission. Okay, uh, yeah, but if there's another, if there's a, you know, day of the week and a certain week that you think would work for you, I mean, I can even just take some notes. So you Maybe just let you send out the next email or email to us, have everyone chime in since other people aren't here right now. Sure. Yeah. But we should get that set. Interesting. And what nights are options? Like, we're sort of Thursday is. Yeah, you you wouldn't be able to be on the first and third Wednesday. That's you know, right. not options. Yeah, first and third Wednesday, second and fourth Tuesday, third Thursday, and there might be a board that I library the library board. I don't, I don't know when they meet. My head when they meet. <laughs> Well, but there are options in there. I can I can track it down and get you out. Get that set. Yeah. Well, so that would be great. I thought that we were meeting quarterly because of concerns. Is meeting monthly? No, we just have we haven't had any real applications. Oh, I see. COVID and everything. Yeah. We also changed our number of board members too. We dropped one member. Number. It used to be. I'm sure it was. Always be an odd, odd number. I think it's usually an odd number on Mars. But I don't recall seven. Yeah, I know. I'd have to go back and look at my materials. Do you want these? Um, yeah, if you don't want them, I can. I can I order see some? I believe they did sure. scribble on. I know we need to move to adjourn. If you can uh, move into the adjourn the meeting once, oh. you're, once you feel that you're done. I motion to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Uh, it's unanimous.